Today, we're checking out the latest release in Kali Linux 2022.1, the first release of the year for 2022. There's been a couple visual refreshes here, an updated wallpaper in the background, as you can tell already. Another thing is if we go to switch a user, the login screen seems to be updated. At least I don't remember seeing this wild visual wallpaper in the background. If we log in, another thing that's gotten updated as far as a visual refresh is the grub theme. So we'll have to restart things here. And here's the grub menu whenever loading into the system now in Kali Linux. The new grub theme looks like this. And you have the selection between loading Kali, going into advanced options for Kali, or system setup. These are a few small changes to spruce up the environment. But let's also check out Firefox, the default web browser here. Also received an update to the overall theming. As you can tell, the background is very similar to what you saw in the login screen. And they've tweaked things up a little bit here as well. Looks pretty cool in my opinion. And of course, we have access to various different things on the web that pertain to Kali, Linux, such as tools, documentations, forums, and various other tools. Back on the desktop, not much has changed here. They've kept the XFCE, their default desktop environment, but there is now a new flavor of Kali Linux called Kali Linux Everything, which allows for a complete standalone and offline installer. Basically, this is for the people who'd like to, all of Kali's security tools pre-installed without actually having to have an internet connection, but is quite large up to 9.4 gigabytes for an image. Of course, it wouldn't be a Kali Linux update without some tools getting updated or added to the system here. Here's a quick breakdown of what's been added. DNS X, a fast and multi-purpose DNS toolkit that allows to run multiple DNS queries, email to phone number, an OSINT tool to obtain a target's phone number just by having their email address, Naboo, a fast port scanner with a focus on reliability and simplicity, Nuclei, targeted scanning based on templates, Posh C2, a proxy-aware C2 framework with post-exploitation and lateral movement, and Proxify Swiss Army Knife proxy tool for HTTP or HTTPS traffic capture manipulation and replay on the go. Back to the Kali desktop, let's start a terminal real quick and check out their Kali tweaks tool because they have made some tweaks to this. In the hardening section, once you launch Kali tweaks, you'll notice that now there's SSH client at the very end. What this does is it allows you to have more compatibility to be able to connect to old SSH servers using SSH protocols that are deprecated or also known as legacy SSH protocols. Some servers still use old SSH protocols. And now in Kali, you're allowed to switch on the legacy support and hitting apply, hit okay, type in your root user's password, and you finally have it enabled now. There also have been a few changes to the shell prompt. One thing you'll notice is instead of having a skull here when you're in as a root user, you now have this icon instead. Everything's in red. You're being warned that you have super privileges. A few other small improvements were made in the shell, but we'll continue on because there isn't much here to see. Let's look around the desktop real quick. In the top left, you can get to all the various different subcategories of applications here to start your vulnerability analysis or pen testing like it's always been. At the bottom left, you have the current user logged in, settings manager, and log out to the right of that. Search for anything on the system like a terminal up top. And right here, we can restore or minimize all windows. To the right of that, we have the home users folder which allows you to get around the home users directories in a quick fashion and quick launch some stuff out of there. Following that, there's the text editor. Their themed Firefox is the default web browser. A terminal emulator, a couple things, extra root terminal emulator and PowerShell as well. Then we have 1234 signifying the different virtual desktops you have available. On the desktop background, you have trash, file system, and home for the home users directory. File system leads you to the root directory. On the right hand side, you'll notice right here is something you can actually click on and it tells you about the processes and the current CPU usage. Right of that is your current connection information. Then we have volume control, notifications, power settings, the current time date with the calendar, logging in and out or shutting down the computer on the right hand most side. And then if you right click on the background, you have some tools for creating folders, links, documents and opening up a terminal from the current location. And back in the terminal, let's use HTOP to get 
a feel for the system load. Currently, there's only 543 megabytes out of eight gigs being used on the system. CPUs running between zero and 1.4%. Tasks 77 with 128 threads. And the uptime has been around 13 minutes for this session. And now let's check out NeoFetch for system information. This is Kali Linux, the rolling release model, 64-bit version, running kernel 5.15. There's 2,324 source packages. It's using ZSH 5.8 as the default shell environment. The desktop environment is XFCE 4.16. The window manager is XFWM4. Using the Kali Dark theme for the window theme. Kali Dark for the regular theme, and the icons are Flat Remix Blue Dark. The terminal is Q Terminal, and this is being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series processor, and we're still currently using 547 megabytes out of 8 gigs. Well, those are the improvements here in Kali Linux 2022.1, the first release of the year, a dusting of improvements, as well as refreshes. Great to see in the Kali project. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you made it this far in the review, make sure to subscribe below and smash that like button for me. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, post them in the comments section below. Join me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.